Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here from the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Now, today we have on the show the fabulous Ian Jones from Merchant Business Brokers to talk to us all about how to save a deal when things go wrong. And I think this is such a super important topic for us to investigate uh, because certainly there are many deals where things don't go exactly to plan. And in today's discussion with Ian, we really tear apart what it is that can cause deals to fall over, um, what sort of issues can occur along the way and how it is that you can get to that resolution. What do you do when they're at the brink of uh, no return, how do you bring them back? Well, here we go with our discussion with Ian Jones of Merchant Business Brokers. Hi, Ian. Welcome to the show. It's so good to have you on the show today. Lovely to see you and thanks for having me, Joanna. My absolute pleasure. Now, this is a topic that we're talking about today that's very close to my heart, how to save a deal when things go wrong. Um, I have certainly been in the seat of um, stepping in to try and see some of these deals in the past where things have gone wrong. So I'm really looking forward to digging into this um, with you today because I think it's a super important topic um, and I bet you have got some more stories there in your chest of stories there, Ian. Oh, look, I've been doing this for a very long time and I've been party to lots and lots of deals and uh, You know, everybody loves to celebrate their successes and, uh, you know, what you sort of uh, learn to appreciate in time is some of the biggest successes are the ones you brought back from the brink and uh, the ones that, you know, nearly wasn't there. They nearly didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And then maybe why don't you kick it off by just giving us a really quick overview of who you are and who merchant business brokers are? Yeah, well, my name is Ian Jones. I'm one of the founding directors of Merchant Business Brokers. I've been involved in mergers, acquisitions, uh, a lot in the franchise space, but helping people to effectively buy and sell businesses in different capacities for most of my working life. I'm uh, uh, currently the uh, president of the Australian Institute of Business Brokers, the AIBB, uh, which is the peak professional body for uh, business brokers and business valuers in Australia and in New Zealand. Love it. Okay, great. All right. So um, I guess what, well, what, why don't we kick this off? When we were talking the other day, um, we, we were discussing an example that you had. And I love the stories. I just love the stories of, um, you know, real, real things that are going on in, in our world of buying and selling businesses. Because, you know, I, I think many people either A, that are new to the industry or B, who are buying or selling a business and have never done it before or have only done it a few times before, perhaps just don't understand the nuances of how many things can go wrong and, and, you know, how much work goes on behind the scenes by the brokers and, you know, by the legal teams and the advisor, the deal team to keep these deals afloat. Although I have heard some some people suggest that lawyers sometimes never ask, of course, can uh, can be part of the problem. But, <laughs> but today we're talking about how all of us are, as a deal team you know, it can be part of the solution. But um, but I think it's super useful to be able to shine a light on where things go wrong. So why don't you recount to um, our listeners the story you were telling me the other day, because I thought that was a beauty. Yeah, look, when we were chatting the other day, there were a couple of examples that just jumped into my mind. And uh, one of which was uh, an example where there was, you know, it's a you know, terrific business, you know, circa around that $5 million mark. And, you know, this, uh, you know, buyer and the seller, they've been negotiating and trying to get this transaction completed for a long time. But I just want to highlight there the fact that it can take a really long time to negotiate these deals up to a certain point, right? And and people get exhausted. So that's just one thing I want to highlight. Oh, absolutely. And can I tell you, the one complexity and challenge that everyone has is... 
it's not always about the business. It's often around the people. It's a people business, you know. It's uh, everybody that wants to buy or sell a business is doing it for personal reasons, uh, yeah. for themselves, for their future. And uh, so it's I, for me, it's always about the people. What's their why? What's their purpose? And when you understand that, you can really, you can help them so much better. But, uh, you know, this one particular deal, a lot of businesses can take a, a long time to complete. And, you uh, uh, for circumstances outside of the buyer's and the seller's control. And, uh, you know, this particular business, around $5 million in value, uh, the buyer really loved this business, really wanted it. It fit perfectly in with their longer-term plans. And through the process of negotiation and, you know, really fully understanding the business in its entirety, uh, really came to appreciate and really liked the seller as well. You know, the seller was uh, a lovely lady, owned the business for a very long time, founded it, grew it, and turned it into a very dynamic business within its space. And, you know, and, and during the process, she, you know, really liked the buyer, a lot of re- mutual respect, a lot of trust was brought up, and uh, they really wanted to complete the transaction together. And, um, but there was a gap. There was something that was really difficult for the parties to meet. And uh, essentially, in this particular example, uh, it was price. You know, there's a half a million dollar gap that we looked at so many different ways of being able to meet the difference and, um, you know, structuring it. But his capacity and what she was willing to accept just could not easily be met. And that's quite a gap, right? 500 grand. That's yeah, look, that's 10% of the price, half a million yeah. bucks, it's a lot of coin. And um, after the best part of six months, the party said, look, we really want to get this deal done. A lot of mutual respect, couldn't do it. And I said, well, okay, what we're we going to do? Now, I had a plan. And every single deal, as a professional broker, you need a plan because yeah. not everything goes brilliantly. Things go wrong in a lot of deals. In, in To be honest, in most deals, not everything goes to plan. <laughs> so um, this was, a, a, I had a plan and that plan was, well, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to leave well. So we made a deal that after six months, they, there was enough um uh, they owed it to each other to meet in person, shake hands and wish each other well and go their separate ways. So the plan was we're going to get the parties together. They were going to shake hands and we met in the vendor's um, uh, boardroom and she had numerous offices sort of surrounding that. We met in the boardroom. They shook hands and I said to her up front, if there's any discussion on price, I'm going to tell you to leave this room and go to your office. And that was part of my plan. And I knew something was going to be mentioned on price, and it was. And I said, let's just pause this discussion right here because I knew exactly where it was going to go if they were together. I said, you go to your office. And I stayed in that room, and I spoke only to the buyer. He said, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't move anymore. And I said, don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do. And he said, oh, there's no point. I said, no, you tell me what you can do. And he said, well, I can compromise on the higher purchase arrangements for, you know, some of the machinery. I said, great, leave it with me. And I left him sitting on his own in the boardroom and I literally walked to the vendor's office where she was sitting and I said, well, what can you? She said, I can't, there's no point. I said, don't tell me what you can't do. What can you do? She said, well, I can compromise on some of the staff entitlements around the sick leave. And I walked backwards and forwards between those two offices for over two hours. That was a lot of hard work. And every single time, both the buyer and the seller said, there is no point, I can't do this. And every single time I said, don't tell me what you can't do, tell me what you can do. And after two hours, I went to the vendor and she said, well, I can do this on uh, one, of the, one of the terms. I think it was work in progress. And I said, guess what? We've just agreed to terms. She goes, no, we haven't. Where There's this huge gap. And I said, well, no. And I left that room. I went back to the boardroom and I spoke to the buyer and we had a, a chat. And he said, oh, I can't do this. And I said, guess what? You've told me what you can do. The vendor has told me what she can do, and we have agreed to terms. 
So what we do, and and by the way, she was over the moon, absolutely ecstatic, and he was over the moon. They were both oh, shocked. They fabulous. literally went there. They, they went there to say goodbye. We can't get this deal done. And after the two hours, I had a plan. They said, wow, I can't believe we did it, but Ian, thank you so much. They gave Isn't each other beautiful? a hug. Uh, they got the deal done. She's enjoying life and yeah. uh, he's absolutely loving the business. It couldn't have worked out any better. And, um, you know, that's what I love doing. Oh, it's finding out what you can do. I absolutely love, I love this example because it reminds me of what I love about the industry. You know, we are all here to help get good deals done, right? Like that's what we Absolutely. You, you know, and and what an amazing industry. You know, I'm very passionate about it. You're obviously very passionate about it. And you know, you should be passionate about it if you're in this industry, I think, about, you know, about helping people get to those get those good deals done because it's, you know, it can be life-changing for the seller. This is a huge monumental event quite often you know, in their lives, because quite often they'll only sell a business once, maybe best twice in their yep. life. Um, and, you know, for a buyer, some some buyers, you know, you're, you're multiple acquirers, well, this is just the bread and butter and, and what you do day in, day out. Even for them, it's uh, bell ringing worthy. <laughs> but but for, for many, many buyers, it's a huge milestone. It's a huge thing. And it's just such and amazing. I just love, you know, being in this industry where we get to do deals. And as you say, pulling deals back from the brink. Now, I just want to break down as you were talking, I was thinking about, well, what are the elements here? What are the learnings? What are the things that we can all take from what this example shows? Because there, I think there are a lot of things that actually are relevant to many deals and to many reasons why deals hit road bump. So if you'll allow me to, I want to break it down a little bit, Ian. Yes, um, and absolutely. you just tell me if you think I'm on the wrong path or if you've got <laughs> other things that you want to throw in to sort of deconstruct what your approach here was. So you started off with the why. So what's the purpose? What's in it? What's the motivation for both of the parties? Is that right? Yeah. Did I did I hear that correctly? Absolutely. There's always a reason we need to find out what that is. Do you know what? I love that you say that because that is exactly how we approach it as well. Um, and do you know what? I, I think it's a little bit unique to call that out as well. Many people who are experienced might perhaps do that without realising they're doing it, but it's a super important thing to bear in mind. If you understand where each are going and if you understand the motivations, then you can ultimately bring out what is the win-win for each of them in a deal, which is obviously where you got to in the end. But you couldn't have got to that point in the end if you didn't understand both of the parties and their motivations. Am I right? Absolutely. And and more so, the only reason that I was able to bring them together and reach a um, an agreeable position was because I had the trust and the respect of both parties. Yeah. When they trust you and respect you, they will listen to you. Yes. And yes. communication is fundamental to be able to have, whether it's an easy deal or a tricky deal or anywhere in between, actually seen all the way through. So, yeah, yeah trust and respect is absolutely crucial and communication, effective communication is one of the things that can come from when you've got all of those other things lined up. You are so right. I just absolutely love that because trust and respect is one of the things that can be there right in the beginning. And then I, I often find through the period of contract negotiations or due diligence or whatever, working out the nitty gritty. You're right in that prevention is better than cure. Yeah. And if you manage to manage a deal to a point, you can actually talk about essentially the three Ps. You know, you have a, a you have to prepare, you have a plan, and when you understand the purpose of everything, you know, you're able to be able to mitigate those things and get ahead of the problems that can occur 
yep. later on. And then the communication and all of those things is absolutely fundamental to that. But, you know, you've got, you know, prevention is better than a cure. You've got to control what you can control. Yeah. There are so many things in deals that are outside of our control, but the things that are in our control, like having a plan, having the skill, the knowledge and all of those sorts of things and understanding the intricacies, not just of the business, but you know, there's an old saying, you know, a good lawyer knows the law, but a great lawyer knows the judge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and in our, in our profession, it's the same I thing. One. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an Ian Jones original, I'll be honest. Okay? <laughs> but it's one of those things where you have to know everything about everyone yeah. and every little bit. You do, you, we're, absolutely. We're professionals. You've yeah. got to know all this thing. Yeah. It's about the seller. What's the seller's motivation? What's their reasons? What's their concerns? Sometimes it's just about price and, and you know, I want to be out and I've, I've got something. I've got health issues. I've got other agendas or, or reasons or motivations. But sometimes you know, they've got a family member in the business. They've got a team that they've grown to love and cherish and they just want the right buyer to come into it. So the team culture and the customers yes. that they've been looking after for 30 years are going to continue to be looked after. Yeah. So when you understand what's important to them, you can put the time in to bring somebody in that's going to be the perfect fit for what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. And when you understand the buyer, they don't just want a business. They want a business that's either going to give them some synergistic benefits. They want something that's going to provide a future for them and their children. They want something where they can, you know, bolt onto something else or get expansion into another area. Whatever their motivation is, when you understand that, again, you can meet those needs as well. Love it. Okay, so we've obviously got understanding the why, the purpose, and then we've talked about doing things to ensure we create trust and respect and keep trust and respect. And, and yep. you know, that means playing cards straight as well, yes, I think. And, and and I think a mistake is um, when buyers or sellers do things that aren't playing cards straight. So my, my whole take on it is you've got to play it straight because keeping that trust and respect between the parties is critical to getting the deal done properly. Then the next thing is effective communication. One of the things that you did um, that I love and that is also a strategy we use is wherever there's issues that are arising don't just continue a forwards and backwards. And of course, um, in your situation, it looked like the deal was dead. So there wasn't that opportunity either. But the parties get exhausted with forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, you know, and, and it really, it takes out the energy um, and yeah. the, the forward momentum in a deal. So our strategy, which sounds like it must be very similar to yours, is get everyone to the table talking and ideally with the aim of either coming to a, the finalization of everything right then or walking away because if you let it go on for too long everyone just gets deal fatigue which i think is a is a real thing out there right <laughs> it's a real thing for a lot of people yeah it's for, yeah. for a, a lot of people and yeah. and that's why we've got to keep our energy up right because you know we've got to combat that absolutely <laughs> and, and sometimes when you, you know buyers and sellers they don't, to be honest a lot of what they're trying to achieve is actually aligned they want a transaction that works for them now i appreciate that they might have competing interests the buyer wants to buy it at the lowest price the seller wants to sell it at the highest price all of those sorts of things aside, that's all part of managing a really effective negotiation. Mm. And honestly, we, we've got steps and, and 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 key things that I'm happy to share either now or at another time about, you know, how you know things that we find that are absolutely crucial to being having a really successful negotiation process. Mm. But when it, it, you're right, the trust and the respect, and to be honest, sometimes it's simple as seek first to understand. Yeah. Don't try to sell them this when you understand that they're trying to achieve this. Yeah. And it's just spending that time because, you know, it, it, it's fundamental. They, they, they get to understand what's important to the other party and it allows both parties to actually meet the other's needs in order to achieve the things that are important to them. 
I totally agree. We we had a deal actually um, a few weeks ago that ultimately, unfortunately, fell over, notwithstanding um, all of our uh, work to try and ensure it didn't fall over. But the reason it fell over was because the buyer just couldn't click on to the fact that our client's main concern was um, was the care for the staff. So they'd been, the, these, the staff of the business had been with them for a very long time and it was super important for them that they had someone that they felt would respect and, you know, a continue. great cultural fit for the business. Exactly, yeah. was a good, exactly, exactly. And, and, you know, I think the problem was that the buyer and their, their deal team got really focused on the detail rather than the bigger picture of understanding what our client, ultimately what our client's motivators were. And they were focused oh. on ways to move price, but ultimately what our client wanted was something completely different, you know, and we tried to communicate it, but because they were so focused in their realm, they couldn't see how to meet our client there, you know, and um, ultimately they went off, you know, and and sold to someone else. And and so it was, it was totally fine, deal done at the end of the day. But this buyer missed out because they and their deal team couldn't understand the real motivators um, of of our client and um, and kept focusing on the wrong issues. <laughs> so, you know, that's where EQ totally is important. Totally get that, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, I've got an ex another example just recently actually where, you know, we had a buyer in the cellar. They wanted to get the deal done. They loved each other. Well, no, they didn't. They were kind of liked each other. They were comfortable <laughs> with each other. Uh, and they really wanted to get the deal done. Perfect fit for them. I can tell you the solicitors did not see eye to eye on this particular deal. And the vendor's solicitor actually said, no, don't like it. Don't like the, the conditions that they put through on, on the contract. My recommendation is don't sign it. And I knew this seller needed to sell. I mm -hmm. knew that the terms were reasonable uh -huh. and I understood the motivations for them. Yeah. Now, this is a, a last resort thing because we went through every single stage. The deal was just about to fall over. And I said, okay, guys, we're getting just the buyer, just the seller. We're going in. Uh, we came into my boardroom in Newcastle and we sat down for, again, the best part of two hours. This is a very time-consuming thing. Mm. I went through this contract point by point with both just the buyer and both the seller. And I said, this point, does everybody agree with that? Mm. Okay, yes, tick. It turns out that when they went through it, they were actually really comfortable with every single point that was yeah. in there, but they didn't read it. They were fully reliant on somebody going, yes, yeah, I wouldn't. And yes. they go, okay. And they did it. They love the fact that now they're free. They've got all of these things. The buyer's loving the business. They're loving the fact that they're no longer in the business. Everybody's happy. So when somebody says, what do you do? To be honest, we do what it takes for as long as it takes to give the parties the outcome. And we never lose sight of the fact that we're looking after our client. We're working in our client's best interest. And we know a successful deal is when both sides are happy or they've actually been pushed to the limit, but they've still got the, the outcome that they wanted. Yeah. And I, I love that. Well, look, and, and that brings me to, um, I, I guess, the the last element that I wanted to talk about that I felt that your example had highlighted. And I love it that you've repeated it again because this just helps to serve the point of the benefits of focusing on where there is agreement, you know, and, and finding the yes. Because when you tease it apart, ultimately you find if you can progress it through the yeses and where you find agreement, ultimately the issues tend to dissipate into something very tiny that can be dealt with, you know. Um, and, and I see that again and again and again and again. Um, but I just love this, this idea of getting everyone together and we, you know, it, as I say, it's a strategy that we feel cuts through really well. Getting everyone together and working through it all and getting to finalisation in the one meeting rather than letting it go on uh, for death by one million emails forwards and backwards. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Whatever I get over it. <laughs> yeah. Look, and you talk about deal fatigue, and it's a, it is a, a real thing. And I think yeah. when when people understand that, yes, they want to get a deal done, but often the, the reasons you've got to think about why do things go wrong, and that's because either somebody's oblivious to what the other person's needs are and aren't trying to actually meet that one or they're trying to force a deal, they're trying to push timing, they're trying to, you know, do things in in something in not the right order. You know, yeah. you don't want to get to a heads of agreement and complete a due diligence when you haven't even got broad agreement between the parties that they like each other yeah. and they're comfortable in doing a yeah. deal together. Yeah. So it's a matter of having a very structured, that's why I keep talking, have a plan. When you know the plan, and we appreciate that plans change, but you always start with the end in mind. If you know the outcome that you're aiming for, you might have to deviate from the original path, but a plan for every circumstance is actually really important. And look, nobody has a monopoly on good ideas, which is why, you know, I'm a member, or it's one of the reasons why I'm actually a member of the AIBB, because you know, education, a strong professional network and people that you can leverage for great ideas that can help navigate these challenges will actually help you to achieve and get more deals across the line because you're right, deals do go wrong. But how you bring them back is really, really important. But having a commitment to your client, a commitment to the character and everything that we actually set ourselves to attain for the people that we're working for and with is crucial. Yeah, absolutely. And and a big call out here, and perhaps in the show notes, we'll also put um, a link through to the AIBB for any of our listeners who might be business brokers and are, aren't already members, but such a wonderful organisation. Um, and I really enjoy being involved with the AIBB, and I know as you do too. But, but you know, I, I think the concept of the industry working together, you know, with its members to help create education, learning and sharing of ideas, you know, because we're all out there, every deal, every good deal that's done is a brilliant thing, you know, and for us all to be supporting each other and making sure we're allowing that to happen and enabling that, I, I think is a lovely thing for the industry. Yeah, we certainly appreciate you and your team for all of the support that you guys provide. I mean, the AIBB is the peak professional body for brokers and business valuers, but for anybody that's involved in deal structure and, uh, you know, it is really important and we are all learning all of the time, but when you're able to deal with people that have had similar examples, you all learn from that and you all get better at it and at the end of the day we just want to look after our clients better and having the skills the education and the professional networks that we can actually help us all do that uh, is is fundamental to the success of what we're all trying to achieve and um, yeah I, I love the fact that I get to help people every day mm. and um you know, every business is different every deal is different fundamentally because of the people that we're dealing with yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Well, look, Ian, I just want to say a massive thank you for coming on to the show today. I really enjoyed this topic and digging into some of these stories because, as I said, I love hearing stories and then pulling apart what made it work uh, because I think that's a great way for us to be able to work out, you know, how is it that we uh, save these deals when things go wrong, when we look back at examples of, of how it's worked in the past. So, Ian Jones, I want to say a massive thank you. And how can our listeners get in contact with you if they are interested in finding out a little bit more about your services? Yeah, look, they can call our team. Probably the easiest way is just to uh, contact us via our website at uh, merchantbrokers.com.au. We've got an incredibly experienced team and we love helping anybody that either wants to buy or sell a business and uh, we're here to help. Brilliant work, Ian. Thank you for coming on to the show today. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it for this episode of the Deal Room Podcast. Of course, where we were talking about how to save a deal when things go wrong. If you'd like more information about this topic, then head over to our website at www.thedealroompodcast.com where you'll be able to download a transcript of this podcast episode if you're the kind of person who likes to read through in more detail everything that we've covered on the podcast. Of course, there and in our show notes accessible via your phone or other podcast player, you'll be able to find details of how to contact Ian Jones at Merchant Business business brokers and the rest of his team 
And you will also be able to see how to contact our lawyers at Aspect Legal if you or your clients would like to discuss any legal aspects of sales or acquisitions in order to help get a deal team who are experienced in keeping deals away from the brink of falling off the cliff or indeed saving them if things go wrong. We've got a number of great services that help businesses prepare for a deal and of course to carry out the transaction once they're in the deal. And we work with clients both big and small so don't hesitate to book an appointment if you'd like to find out how we can assist it's free. Why not? (laughs) Just head over to our website to do that. Well, that's it. Finally, if you enjoyed what you heard today, I would absolutely love it if you pop over to your favorite podcast player and perhaps leave us a review. Tell us what you like. And if there's anything you don't like, why don't you just shoot that through to me personally? And if you have any ideas of topics that you would like covered, we'd love to hear from you because, of course, we really like to meet you where you are and continue to provide you with content uh, that you're most interested in hearing about. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us once again for another episode of The Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. Aspect Legal has a number of great services that help businesses prepare for a sale or acquisition to help them prepare in advance and to get transaction ready. We've also got a range of services to help guide businesses through the sale and acquisitions process. We work with clients both big and small and have different types of services depending on size and complexity. We provide a free consultation to discuss your proposed sale or acquisition. So see our show notes on how to book a time to speak with us or head over to our website at aspectlegal.com.au. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Thanks for listening to The Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au.